through the phenomenal power of TV and technology, we're back. And with a bang, love. See? All righty. Now, we left off on what causes a blocked solar plexus. So, oh, it's blocked. Why? There are a lot of things that can cause a blocked solar plexus, such as stress, illness, emotional upset, shame, disconnecting from ourselves, conflict, and generational anger and trauma, and trauma in general. So in short, life, ha ha, it is how we deal with these stressors, or not, that can cause things to get out of whack. In her book, which I spoke about, which I highly recommend, The Art and Practice of Spiritual Herbalism, Empress Karen and Rose says that anger is a catalyst to change. When our anger is nourished and directed, it motivates us to grow and create change for ourselves, our families, our communities. We often don't think of anger as being a good thing. Often we see it as a toxic trait that we can or need to meditate and or affirm out of us. It's not quite the way it works. It can be hard to remember that anger can be a useful tool, not just a negative emotion, and that conflict can be resolved in a non-toxic way, which is a new concept for many of us because we grew up seeing conflict uh, resolved in very toxic um, ways that were like, whoa. So bear in mind that when one chakra is out of balance, it can affect them all. When your solar plexus is blocked, you don't know your value. You don't know your inner gifts and how precious and valuable you are. You could be really angry too and attempt to suppress that anger. This can manifest as disease. The herbal empress, that's what I'm calling her now, Karen M. Rose says that the gallbladder, which works in tandem with the liver, aha, stores what the liver gives. So ask yourself, what is your gallbladder story? Often it is deep-seated anger she mentions in her book that so many women have their gallbladders removed. Hmm. When we think of the gallbladder, what comes to mind? I didn't initially make the connection about the gallbladder and maybe gumption, the audacity to have the gall. To think and envision beyond what we've been told is possible. And the gallbladder, or the gall, um, how did my father put it? The unmitigated gall. Yeah, that was it. Um, and just the link between the words, the gall and the gallbladder. She says to have gall means you will live an expansive and whole life. I like that. I really like that. That kind of struck me. So, we're going to talk about the imbalances now. Imbalances or blockages are often rooted in shame and self-identity and issues stemming from childhood, no surprise there, and our teen years, as well as ancestral and or generational trauma and just trauma in general, right? Getting in touch with not only our anger and our gall, but our inner child and healing him or her will be incredibly beneficial in balancing the solar plexus. As adults, we become great cover-up artists, like really good at covering up areas where we may feel inadequate or deficient or lacking. However, like a wound, honey, baby, stuff festers. So it's time for a little peroxide for our solar plexus, but not just bleep this, baby, we own this sucker's getting cleaned out, we're going to town. But examining and using our anger as a catalyst for healing identifying why we are angry and looking at it and examining it through the lens of compassion. It's kind of hard to do. It takes work and practice, but think of it like Planet Fitness. It's a judgment-free zone. One of the tools that I have used and use that help me 
is this phenomenal little journal. Um, so shout out to Allie. Thank you for the gift card to Barnes & Noble. And it's called the Love Yourself Journal. And I, it comes with prompts and a really cool little um, magnetic little bookmark thing. But some of the prompts, so I'll show you some of the pages. Hopefully this is showing up on camera. Bam, bam. But it has prompts like, today's self-affirmation. What's bothering me? How to resolve it? How I felt today? What I'm grateful for? I'm great, you know, five things. And then I feel most confident when? Things I've grown to love about myself. Mm, ways I'm too hard on myself. How much hydration did you get? How much sleep? And then a, a space for reflection. And it's, I love this because um, I remember when I started, let me see, what did I put? Um, oh, obviously my solar plexus was uh, unbalanced because I'd say things like, oh, perfectionism, hmm, self-critical. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, well, um, yeah, wow. Oh, honey, it was deep. But anywho. And sometimes I still say I'm a little too judgmental or self-critical, but I also add that I need to view myself with some compassion through the lens of compassion that I'm learning to be a little less judgmental and critical, self-critical. Um, things I've grown to love about myself. So it's a nice way, and then, you know, I'll write down something like, you know, I'm learning to love who I am my quirks, my foibles, um, the person, the woman that I'm becoming. But anywho, I think it would be a great tool. And I think it's like 13 bucks at Barnes and Noble. So it would be a good one to pick up on your, your journey. So anywho, back to this. Now, um, okay, we talked about the self-love journal. Now, Empress Karen M. Rose recommends having a restorative practice of nourishing and honor, honoring your anger. What does this look like? It's going to be a little different for everyone. It may include some breath work, journaling, shadow work, working with a therapist. Yelling in the shower, I highly recommend this one. Your neighbors might think you're crazy, but like whatever. Martial arts, kickboxing, throwing or punching a pillow. Yoga, meditation, visualization exercises, while using herbs and other items like the crystals, the essential oils, to support you as you process and analyze the anger. Eventually, baby, you will get to the heart of it. You will uncover and heal the root of the anger. Example, not feeling seen or heard or valued. You could begin to heal ancestral trauma, no small feat, while you learn to reconnect with yourself, you will begin to acknowledge your feelings. I would say shut the front door, but I need you to keep that mug open. The Herbal Empress recommends learning how to move through these traumas by not judging yourself, but giving yourself some time and space to process. Take responsibility while building stronger, more authentic relationships with others and most importantly, your relationship with yourself. Now that sounds good, baby, that sounds real good. Incredibly difficult, but really good. So we've got a few questions, well actually several, but like whatever, to think about as we process and begin to heal our solar plexus. So the first one is, what pisses me the frick off? What makes you mad? What have you learned about anger? Do I think of anger as a negative emotion? What have I been led to believe about it? Is it true? Is it false? What have I believed up to this point about it? I think I feel a round table discussion coming on. Now, let's think about you as a kid. What made me happy as a kid? What did I like to do? What did I like to do? I like to play. I like to play and have fun and and uh, eat cake and uh, create and I like stickers. Uh, what do I like to do? I 
I like to teach, I like to heal, I like to spread love and light and joy, stuff I still like to do now. And, but I just want to get paid for it, ha <laughs> ha. But yeah, that's what I like to do. I like to play and have fun and just bring light. Is it difficult? So what, you know, answer in the, the comments. What uh, did you like to do as a kid? What made you like really happy? Is it difficult for me to connect with myself? What does my personal power feel like? Do I even have a clue? Do I see value or value my gifts? Do I believe I have gifts? What are my gifts? I got gifts. You do, boo, and we're going to help you rediscover what they are. Do I trust myself? Hmm. Am I afraid of trusting myself because of poor decisions I've made in the past? Do I need to clear any ancestral karma or blocks in order to move forward in my life? And if I do, uh, ro -ro, how the heck do I do this? I got a solution for you. I have an app for that. What is my soul and inner child howling at me to do? Am I ignoring it? And if so, why? Is my personal power tied to my family line? Mm. So, so many questions to ask and answer. If this is triggering, like I said, triggers are not necessarily a bad thing. The trigger just shows us areas that need healing that we need to address. So, physician heal thyself. Alrighty, now I'm gonna, we're going to stop. I'm going to give you some time to, to answer, to process those, because that's a lot. That's, mm, that's a lot. And we'll come back, and then we'll talk about the personal power blend, and that's adapted from the book Self Care, The Chakras and Self Care by Ambie Cavanaugh. I really like that one. So, a uh, little processing, and we'll be back.